Hey everybody, 3D Printing Professor back at the show off shelf for my chest sets because the video that I did recently for the tungsten filled filament, I used the Duchamp chest set to show off this filament, but I didn't realize until I was putting the video together that there was a lot of controversy surrounding these particular 3D models. I thought I was fine at the time, but now I gotta wonder, did I do something bad, illegal, or if not illegal at least, immoral and what should i do about this so i'm going to need your help to make a decision however since 3d printing is embroiled in so many different laws and contracts let's talk a little bit about those first and then you tell me what i should do okay so what happened was this I'm looking for a chest set to test out some filament with and I find, among others, the Duchamp ch self-supporting chest set by Thingiverse user Machina. I go down, check the license, share alike attribution, fantastic, I can use it and share it online and I should be good with that. But what I didn't realize was that this chest set was actually remixed from a chest set created by two people, Scott Kittle, Brian Sarah. They took and made this chess set. And how did they make this chess set? Well, they took some pictures of an old chess set created by a man named, I believe it was Mar Marcel Duchamp in France, in France, sorry. And from the pictures, they recreated by hand this chess set. In terms of copyright, that is called a transformative work. They didn't digitally scan it or anything like that. They used the pictures maybe as reference, but they did it by hand. However, the Duchamp estate, the children of Duchamp, because of course, Marcel Duchamp is dead. His This chess set is almost a hundred years old now, but his family said, hey, we're gonna have you take this down. Now, the creators of the chess set checked their rights and tried to see if they could fight it and it turned out they had a good case. They might be able to fight it. After all, it's an old work and it might be in public domain, definitely in American terms, but maybe even in French terms. So there might not even be a claim on it, but to be nice guys, they back down instead of deciding to fight an actual takedown letter. However, the original or the set that I downloaded had been remixed from that already and placed online. So here's the deal. I made a video using a remix chess set from a transformed chess set of a copyrighted work that had a claim put on it. So where does that put me and what should I do? Now if that's all that you need you can jump ahead to the end of the video because there's a survey there and I want to know what you think I should do and I will abide by your decision but let's talk a little bit more about the complication of this matter. 3D printing kind of sits at the crossroad of a lot of legal and contract discussion, and it's very difficult to sort out everything that you are or are not legally entitled to do without being a lawyer, and I'm no lawyer, but I've done a lot of research on the subject. The basic problem comes down to the question of how liable are you as an individual to be sued for doing something, and if that does happen, how much are you likely to lose? And the answer is a lot. If you cross copyright and other laws and end up being found liable for them, you could be losing a lot of money, particularly if there's somebody interested in actually pursuing these things. And the question is, is the risk worth it? Well, to know that, you kind of have to understand your rights. The most common right related to 3D printing is copyright. Copyright applies instantly without having to file for any paperwork. Basically, it's like this. If you create something that's of a creative nature that somebody didn't pay you to make and doesn't infringe on somebody else's copyright, trademark, or other laws, or have to be covered by another type of law, then there you go. You've got copyright. Done and done. There is, of course, paperwork that you can file for if you want to have a copyright with teeth. And if you happen to run afoul of that copyright, you are liable to lose a lot of money. On YouTube, the Idea Channel did a fantastic video about this, uh, interviewing Michael Weinberg, a lawyer for Shapeways, and he talked a lot about the 3D printing copyright law, 
conundrum. I recommend you watch the entire Idea Channel episode and the comment video that follows it and follow the link inside that comment video for the additional content that they recorded, which talks in part about transformative work because that is particularly relevant to this discussion. And then there's the Creative Commons license. What is the Creative Commons license and how does that protect the content creators and how does it protect the person downloading and using those models? Well, I could tell you a little bit about this. Whitney Potter on the 3D Printing Today podcast did an excellent segment in episode 134 of their podcast where he explained Creative Commons so much better than I could. In fact, I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm just going to let Whitney talk about it. So here's what he had to say on the subject. So anyway, I thought we should talk about generally copyright and licensing of copyright. Well, the reason why we have licensing like Creative Commons is that by default, when I create something, I hold all of the copyright rights to it. So you can't do anything with it, <laughs> right? You can't copy it and put it on your website with very few exceptions. But most of us who are publishing things on the Thingiverse are doing it because we want people to be able to do things with our work. We want to share them, but we want to share them on terms that we control. And that's where a license comes in. Now, Creative Commons is the most common one employed. There are other options out there. But basically what a license is, is it's an agreement that we are, we are saying, you are allowed to do these things with our object, right? Now, you see a lot of who, you know, people running their mouths off on chat rooms about how how Creative Commons is not the law. But the thing is, what these people don't seem to get, and what I'm trying to clarify here, is that Creative Commons doesn't benefit the creator of the object. Right. If I issue a Creative Commons license, I am reducing my rights to allow other people to use the object. Because without Creative Commons, all rights are reserved. Now, they, there's sort of this internet myth among some of these people that Creative Commons is not law. Therefore, if you put something under Creative Commons, you're actually putting it in the public domain because Creative Commons has never been tried in court, right? There's a reason why Creative Commons has never been tried in court, because you don't need Creative Commons in court, right? If you infringe on one of my copyright designs by violating the license, I sue you under copyright law. Creative Commons doesn't enter into it. <laughs> Another thing that's interesting that I did some, some reading about it um, is that Creative Commons is, is, is sort of brittle. It's sort of like, you know, like the safety glass windows that once you break Creative Commons, you no longer have Creative Commons license on that object. Did you get that? Creative Commons doesn't protect the person who created the thing. That person is covered by copyright, patent, or whatever other laws are necessary to cover them. The Creative Commons covers you as the person who downloaded and uses the model. If you follow the Creative Commons stringently, then it will allow the content creator to give to you the ability to use their models. But if you don't follow it, it goes away. There is some talk about the end user agreement in Thingiverse giving Thingiverse the ability to you do whatever they want with your model and yes, that's true But Thingiverse's lawyers have clarified that that means that they have the ability to upload and share those models with the world Does that mean that Thingiverse could also do some bad things with those models? Well, sure Thingiverse, Magerbot, and now Stratasys has the right to do whatever they want with those models. However Historically, they haven't done anything nefarious. They haven't even really used the models that other people create to sell their product They create their own models. So generally speaking they're being the good guys in this situation and that's all right I have my own grief with MakerBot and Stratasys, but this isn't one of them. But that doesn't grant you, the person who's downloading these models, any more rights than anybody else. You still have to follow copyright and creative commons and all these other laws to make sure that you're in the safe zone. So what about this specific case with this chess set that I downloaded and made a video on and put up online? Am I in the safe for doing it? Well, I don't know. On the one hand, it's an old work that 
possibly has passed into public domain. On, uh, on the other hand, the people who potentially have a claim to that copyright have asked that it not be used. But back to the other hand, they've said that they did so because they didn't want people abusing his work. Which is funny coming from the people trying to protect the work of a man who defaced a Mona Lisa with a mustache and beard for his own amusement. All of this was covered in the write-up that I'll link to in the description. You should check it out. It's kind of funny stuff. But, on the other hand, does any of that matter? Because this is a copyright claim by somebody. The way I see it, there are three possibilities. And as Michael Weinberg on the Idea Channel video pointed out, if this ever does come to a legal decision and a judge has to make a decision, it's what the community has decided to do that will most likely influence the legal decision. So we have an opportunity right now to set legal precedent for what should be done in this case. So I'm opening this up to you. The way I see it, there are three possibilities, but I'm going to break it into four so I can understand your thoughts and motives as to the one that you choose. Option number one, take the video down. I shouldn't have put it up in the first place. That was a mistake and I really don't deserve to have it. All of my hard work and the things that I did mean nothing because I based it off of something that I didn't properly research before doing and I should not have claim to any of the work that I did there. I need to take the video down, get rid of it, and just move on. Option number two, I take off the monetization off the video. Just be a nice guy. Don't make any money off of this model that I didn't make and that somebody has a claim to through a rather long chain. But leave the video up. The video itself is my hard work and, and I deserve to at least share it with the world. I don't want to waste that time. But I should at least take monetization off of the video. Be a nice guy. Show at least some consideration. Option number three, and I'm breaking this into two parts so that we can have a discussion about why you say that, is basically do nothing. Leave the video up the way that it is and, and do nothing. But why should I do nothing? Should I keep it up? Because really this is a remix of a transformed work of a hundred year old work of a person who probably would have enjoyed the idea anyways of sharing his work and legally I'm probably safe to do so or should I leave it up and do nothing because I should have the right and the freedom to do whatever I want screw the laws and systems I why should we even be considering this keeping in mind that if you say that and somebody steals the hard work that you do and profit off of it you're okay with that also, if you can't vote because you're on mobile or something, I'll put a link to a survey that will be found wherever links are found so that your vote can be heard. I really want to hear from all of you, but think about it and make a good choice. Like I said, we're setting precedents.